Okay, in this video, I'd like to introduce the four fundamental forces. These are the four forces, well, at least we think these are the four fundamental forces, and everything that happens around us is governed by these four things here. All right, so they're called electromagnetism, gravity, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Now, looking at those, what ones would you know? Or at least have heard of, and you think you might know. Well, you definitely have heard of gravity. And you definitely, well, you perhaps have heard of electromagnetism. And what I find is strange is the one that you will see instantly recognisable on paper, gravity, is the one that we know least about. We know almost nothing about gravity. Alright, uh, so let's talk about that first. The proposed particle, we think there is a, a, a particle called, and we're going to call it, if we find it, the, the graviton. And like I said, we don't really know anything about it, so I can't tell you something that... Uh, that will say the smartest scientists don't know, let alone me. So, yeah, the gravity, something we don't know much about, and the proposed particle is the graviton. Alright, so I'll just get rid of that. The next one I'd like to talk about is electromagnetism. So I need to split this down here. Electromagnetism. Electricity and magnetism we often hear. And these, it's strange, you might, these initially were thought to be two separate forces. However, it was found that they're one and the same thing. And basically, well, magnetism is something probably people understand better. And the magnets on your fridge, the force that causes them to work, of course, is magnetism. And it attracts things. So, uh, unlike poles attract, like poles repel. So you have a north pole and a south pole, which we call them a north's repel, south's repel. However, a north and a south will attract. So that's something we're all pretty much familiar with. And um, electricity is the movement of electrons. The Okay, and yeah, movement of electrons. Now, I don't really get much into it, but electromagnetism, believe it or not, is also the force which is governed, or which, excuse me, governs the behavior of light. And light is what we call a, a propagating electromagnetic field. I won't go into that, but it's strange that we would say the first force that we understood best is to do with something which you know is utterly crazy. We 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 more we know more about light than we do about gravity, or these other two forces here, which is madness. Because I think light is an amazing thing personally. But electricity and magnetism, they create light, or they govern light. They govern your electricity, of course, moving around in your house, and your light. And you can never have one without the other. They're always the same. So say for example your charger from your plugging and charger of your phone. It's got electrons moving through it to charge your phone, and at the same time, there is a, a very weak nuclear, or excuse me, not nuclear, magnetic field associated with it. All right, you can never have one without the other. And just to tell you, the particle associated with this is the photon. That is, some of you might know that it's also called the light particle. So we have the photon and we have the graviton. All right, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the strong nuclear force. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is the strong nuclear force particle is the gluon. <laughs> yes, that's it. It'll give you an idea as to what, what it's what it's used for. It's for gluing things together. So you might be aware of uh, aware of the fact that there are things called atoms, and you, it was believed that atoms were are the fundamental building blocks of everything. Everything, including the TV you're watching this in, is made up of atoms. You are made up of atoms. And it was found out since, well, actually, no, atoms aren't the fundamental building block. We have things called nucleons, and the two nucleons are protons and neutrons. And that's something you've, you've, I'd be surprised if you haven't heard of a neutron or a proton. However, have you heard of things called quarks? Maybe you have. You might have heard the name quark. And quarks, atoms are made of protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are made of quarks. And at the moment... And I mean genuinely at the moment, because this isn't this isn't the um, the fact. Might might be the fact. Quarks and electrons. We believe, and a couple of other things, of course, are the fundamental particles. You cannot get you cannot break these up. But I wouldn't hold my breath because a hundred years ago we said atoms were the fundamental building blocks. That's clearly changed. So, the thing about quarks is the a proton and neutron is made up of three quarks. And Due to their little properties, not little, due to their properties, they usually don't want to stay together. So it's strange. We have three things that don't like staying together that stay together. And what causes them to stay together is this man, the gluon. So they chain, exchange gluons, and they cause it. They they basically cause them to stay to stay close together. 
uh, analogies I find often are very good and the analogy that I've often heard for the gluon is that it's like if you were if you were passing a medicine ball between two people you were throwing it between two, two people and obviously you have to stay very close together in order to, to actually reach the med medicine ball to the other player or the other person and the, the gluon is kind of like that in order to exchange the gluon you must be very close to the other person and finally we're talking about the weak nuclear force the one which I don't really like people's explanation for the particle is the intermediate vector boson now don't mind the name let's call it the IVB or let's call it a vector boson boson is B O S O N and people say it's it's for it is deal with beta decay beta decay what is beta decay I'm just going to tell you very basically that a proton P R O T O N can become a neutron and what can a neutron do it can become a proton and how to do that is by exchanging these things called intermediate vector bosons. Okay, so there are three of them. There's the W plus, the W minus, and the oh, W plus, W minus, and the, the Z naught. There are three bosons, and the exchange of these three bosons will cause your, cause your proton to become a neutron and a neutron to become a proton, and that's what that's what causes your decay. And in actual fact, that's uh, part of the thing that happens in. Um, nuclear reactions, there's a lot of decay in nuclear reactions, as in like in your nuclear reactor, and of course in the sun and all that sort of stuff. So there are the three of them, um, there, oh, excuse me, the, the three particles here, but the four, four forces, electromagnetism, gravity, the strong force and the weak force, and the four, um, would say, carriers, the four carrier particles. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.